Hi, everybody, and welcome to How to Use Virtual Reality to Train Employees Faster and Smarter. I'm your host, Corey Morris, the Chief Marketing Officer at Synergy XR, and joining me today are some of the most seasoned XR veterans and enthusiasts out there. To your top left, Mass Trollscore, the CEO and co-founder of Synergy XR. Bottom left, Christian Carlson, XR lead from Gwenfoss. And bottom right, Tyler Scott, lead business development manager, Gwenfoss. I feel like this is the whole Brady Bunch set up right here. <laughs> On behalf of all four of us, I just want to say thanks uh, for joining us. And we're super excited to, uh, to share the next hour uh, with you. So here's the thing. We're here today to talk about virtual reality and how it can be a better, more effective way to train, onboard, and, and upskill your employees. And I suspect that many of you out there have these complex, these really sophisticated services and products that require maybe a more visual, immersive storytelling in order for employees and maybe even your customers to fully understand what it is you do and maybe even why you do it. And that's certainly been the case for Gwenfoss, who... If you don't know, they are the world's largest producer, manufacturer of industrial pumps. And if we're talking about some sophisticated products here, large products, Gwenfoss is a great example. And that's exactly why we've asked them to join us today to share how they're using virtual reality, actually a whole bunch of different extended realities to accelerate their training. Um, so before we get started, uh, there's a bit of housekeeping. First of all, we want to make this as interactive as possible, so feel free to use the Q&A function down at the bottom of your screen to ask questions uh, anytime during the webinar, and we'll do our best to try to get to them. Um, there'll also be time at the end of the webinar to ask questions, and if it's a good question, ladies and gentlemen, we'll bring you on live to ask it to our panelists. Also, don't hesitate to use the chat function to share with us, but also to share with one another. We want this to be a community affair. Um, in fact, why don't we try that right now? I would love to hear where people are joining in, for, in from today. So if you want to drop that into the chat function right now, that'd be great. Um, I think that's it. So why don't we go ahead and dig in? Uh, it brings me great pleasure to announce our first speaker. Uh, he is the CEO and co-founder and partner of Synergy XR, Mr. Mass Trollscore. Mass, I'm going to hand things over to you now. Thank you very much. Um, so um, my name is Mass Trollscore here, and I've been with the, with the Combi for, for quite a, a while. Um, and I've been looking forward uh, to this talk today. Um, we actually also did it in Silicon Valley uh, a couple of months ago, uh, me and Christian uh, and Tyler. Um, so um, yeah, it's good. It's good to be back uh, and uh, together with the with these two guys and and having a a more in depth talk uh, than we had the last time. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, you guys did this exact same talk at the AWE conference in Santa Clara back in November, right? Almost, almost. Yeah. This is a, an yeah. extended one, but yeah. Right. Yeah. Great. Do you, um, want to, do you want me to add, do you want me to prompt the deck for you? Yeah. So if you start the deck, then, you know, uh, if you, if you run the deck, then, you know, I'll just say next slide and then, you know, we will uh, sure go through it. Just real quick, just so you guys know, we have a ton of people from Denmark, no surprise. We have people from Madrid, Spain. We have people all the way from Portland, Oregon. All right, John uh, Roginski, I'm, I'm butchering your last name, apologize for that. But if you're here from Portland, Oregon, that is really early for you. Thank you for taking the very early time to join us. Uh, we are in Norway. We'll see where else we are. We're in Germany. Wow, that's great. Happy to see such a global representation today. That's wonderful. All right, Mass, mm. as you requested, I will activate the deck for you, sir. Thank you and much. there we go. Are you seeing that? No, I don't. I will <laughs> try one more time. One more second. How about now? It's done that. I may need to actually act, act the, there we go. The magic share button. <laughs> there we go. Got it. So uh, if you just click on the present mode, uh, then uh, I yep. think it uh, should be there. Uh, no, we still we actually still see your browser. Do you really? Yeah. I don't have anything secret to hide, so we'll go back one more. Let me just activate it again. 
and we will go into present mode. Here we go. I think it's because we actually see. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we're, we're there. there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So Synergy XR, we want we want to be the world's leading platform for uh, the virtual. Uh, uh, training uh, and the corporate metaverse, as as we also uh, call it. And I already like did a, a, a small uh, introduction of me. So if you take the next slide, uh, Corey. Absolutely. So we've been in this game for quite a while now. For over a decade, we've been delivering uh, solutions. Um, we was one of the most uh, um, experienced developers in extended reality and have done over 250 pr uh, projects within virtual and augmented reality. Uh, next slide. Um, so we were founded by the, the founders of Unity Technologies as well, which means so in, in back in 2008, where there were 14 people working at Unity, uh, they initiated uh, Unity Studios, which was uh, the former name of, of our company. Um, and since then, uh, we have uh, developed a tons of, of, of different projects. If you go to the next slide, uh, for some of the largest organizations in the world, this is just some of them that we uh, have highlighted here. Uh, many of the applications that we have been working on within extended reality, so it has been all, uh, on augmented reality applications, mixed reality, and of course, virtual reality applications, which uh, we have. Uh, which, which uh, this uh, webinar is, is more concerned about mm -hmm. virtual reality today. But um, lot, lots of these projects that we've been doing is concerning virtual reality training. Uh, we actually started out with our first project in 2010. If you go to the next slide, Corey. Mm -hmm. um, this was uh, concerning training of maritime workers. Um, uh, where you had the, like where you train fire drills on, on, on workers and this was in 2010 so that was two years before oculus went on kickstarter uh, we actually did this project with some very expensive sony heads uh, virtual reality glasses a terrible field of view um, and we actually also had a, a simulated platform that simulated waves on on a, on the ferry uh, had these heaters in, in the room. So once you get close to the fire, you actually felt it was hot in there as well. And this was again in 2010. Um, so a long time ago, we did a full copy of the ferry uh, and the multiplayer, so people, uh, the employees could run and talk to each other through the, the uh, head, headsets, uh, which simulated like their walkie talkies uh, on, the, on this ferry. If you go to the next slide, um, then another project we've done uh, is for GKN. This is just some highlights that I'm doing just to tell you the different uh, ways of, of utilizing virtual reality in training. So this was more like an onboarding project, that, which was actually also used in marketing. But for new employees, they were introduced to GKN um, Aerospace, uh, what they do, all the components. Oh. So all the component, they have like components in 90% of all airplanes that's flying around the earth. So they also had like a simulation of data, which you can see in the bottom left uh, area um, where you see this globe. It's kind of hard to see in this big picture, but you can see all these different airplanes just in 24 hours, you know, where uh, GKN's uh, um, parts was flying from and to uh, with the different airplanes that was uh, going um, up and up and down with just within uh, 13, uh, no, 24 hours. In the experience, you can also assemble a jet motor and uh, turn it on. You can fire off a rocket uh, and stuff like that. So quite a uh, very cool introduction to, to a, a very cool company uh, in full virtual reality. If you go to the next slide. Sure. Then also off offshore uh, training of employees. We work with uh, Mask Oil and Total on building a training platform uh, for both training gas leaks, uh, fire drills, also to get to know the platform, uh, where is uh, all the, the safety equipment uh, in, in the platform before actually people actually went there. So they already knew exactly where things were and where they were going, uh, where they were going to sleep and what would happen. Um, actually, also when they they arrive to the platform, 
safety uh, route out of the helicopter and down to the to the platform as well um, is also uh, being being trained in in virtual reality training. So these are some of the custom projects that we've done over the years of virtual reality training. Um, just a brief introduction to to what we do and what we've done in in virtual reality training. So I'll hand it over to, uh, to, to Christian and Tyler. All right, thank you, Mats. Hi, everyone. Fantastic being here. Um, have been really been looking forward to this. So um, as said, my name is Christian. I work with XR in Gunfos. I've been with Gunfos since uh, 2013, before then a lifetime in uh, IBM. I'll be presenting uh, one of our cases and uh, some of the things that we do around XR. And then I have my colleague, Tyler Scott or Ty with me. Ty, can you say hello? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for uh, allowing me to join in on the uh, conversation here. So I've been with Grunfoss for 15 years now, started in sales or app engineering and then went into sales. And then in the last year, I've been a, in charge of our competence development and knowledge transfer within the Grunfoss industry uh, corporation. So again, thanks for being here and looking forward for any questions you guys may have. Excellent. Thank you, Ty. So before we uh, go into some more details around VR and, uh, and training, etc., uh, let's just very quickly look at what who Grimfos is. So, um, Corey, if you could just uh, jump to the next slide. Sure. So uh, Grundfos is, um, is a Danish company, um, 17 years old. I'm not going to go into all the details about everything that we do. But as Ty said, we're working in the industry area, but we also work in what utility, commercial buildings, and of course, domestic buildings like my house that I'm sitting in. Uh, looking back, yeah, so here's the pig. This is the first product that, uh, that was pro you know, created and was a water pump uh, for wells. And, and now 70 years later, if you go to the next one, Corey, we are, uh, I, I guess that we could say we're spitting out 18 million products a year. It's a 19,000 people company in uh, many parts of the, of the world. We do everything from these smaller, in this case, the circulator pump to the biggest pumps that you would have in, uh, I don't know, pushing the water up to the top of Empire State Building or uh, in industries, et cetera. Um, a little small fact is that 10% of the energy, uh, electricity energy consumption in the world is actually going today to pumps. Mm -hmm. It's an estimate, but it just says something about how many pumps there are out there and how important that is, it, for instance, on the climate and, and the CO2 levels, et cetera. So there's a lot of focus from Kunsos, of course, into the whole climate action and the UN 13 goals around that, but also around the six, which is clean water and sanitation to everyone in the world. So, so from being just a pump manufacturer, we're doing a lot of work within two systems, applications, et cetera, to support these uh, UN goals. But we'll soon come back to, um, to the case that we're going to go through. So uh, over to you again, Max. Thank you very much, Christian. So what I'm going to take you back to, uh, back to actually 2017, because um, after working a lot with these technologies, also creating a, a lot with Grundfos as well, um, a whole training platform for these guys as well, like very custom built, uh, where you can actually have workstations doing uh, every single uh, movement, how to assemble a pump, uh, how to uh, operate a large press and stuff like that. Um, then companies like Grundfos and many other companies starting to approach us uh, with a, a common need in, in totally different industries, but they were, they were seeking a need for being able to make changes to the applications themselves. Um, and this, you know, was highlighted from so many uh, of our customers at this time. So we started actually to to build a, a platform um, that could service this need uh, in 2018 and 19. But, uh, but you know, we can actually compare the situation to, to the early zeros. So if you go to the next slide, Corey. Back then, every company needed their own website. Um, and they went, went to the web agencies to get them to build a website for them. Um, if then they just wanted to change a picture or a video or make a new on the page on the website, they had to go back to the web agency and make them build it for them. 
Um, so it was impossible to re really, uh, it was at least very hard to, 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 to change things on your own website. You had to go back to these agencies every time and then and step back in line. And this could take weeks, maybe months before you actually change this could be live. Um, if you go to the next slide, yep. then the CMS systems came and disrupted uh, this workflow and made it easier to create websites and ch make changes to your website and upload new underpages and, and it basically expand it and also use templates uh, to build your own website very fast. Um, so this is WordPress, Yomla, Wix, um, Ombraco, all these different CMS tools that came along. We are ex in the exactly same situation here today. If you go to the next slide, Corey, with XR technology. So they used to be very hard to create, the, like we've done with the last decade uh, with these technologies. Every company that made a, a, um, a application within augmented or virtual reality, you know, if you wanted some changes, you had to go back to who we used to be, and and then you know had to step in line. And, and programming can you know takes time, so it 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 was just you know a not agile or, or very fast workflow, and also very expensive uh, because programmers are expensive, uh, consultancies are expensive, so. That's also one of the reasons why we really started building this platform. If you go to the next slide. Mas, who was, who was this, was this photo of? Uh, that's a sensorama. That's, uh, that's uh, back in, uh, in the 60s. So, you know, it's not an old idea with augmented and virtual reality. You know, we, we've been wanting this for a long time. The technologies just simply haven't been there. So that's what a, uh, that's what a virtual reality headset looked like in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We've come, we've, come, we've come quite a way since then. We have. Where, where's the strap? Where's the strap? I know. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, um, but then, uh, so back to the subject here. Uh, so basically that's what we're trying to do here at Synergy XR. We, we, have, we have made a platform that makes it easier and faster and cheaper to get started with XR technologies and do experiences yourself without having to program, just like the CMS systems uh, did in the, in, the, in, in the middle of the zeros. If you go to the next slide, Gary. So basically what we build is a, a secure enterprise ready cloud where you can upload your own content, 3D models, images, videos, PDF files, uh, like data sheets, presentations, and of course, 3D scans as well from your mobile phone. Um, that makes, you know, you can make very easy scans today and stuff like that with your lighter sensor, um, 3D models that you already have can be added up there. Once it's uploaded to, to your private cloud, you can access that no matter where you are. If you're in Texas, where Thai is, if you are in Biang Bo, where, where, where Christian is, or you are knows where I am right now, and then yeah, you, uh, you're probably not in Biang Bo today. It looks like you're working from home, Christian. <laughs> but basically you can meet and collaborate in virtual, augmented and mixed reality across devices, uh, also, uh, we have a desktop application as well, so you can join from a desktop if you don't have one of the headsets. And, and the second after, so basically, Christian could do a scan of his house right now, and two minutes after, Tyler could join and scan in, his, uh, in virtual reality with his virtual reality headset. So yes, you can see they are quite small today compared to the Sensorama from the 60s. Um, if you go to the next slide, Corey. Yep. So just to put some images on, we also have a product video we can send out in the, in the, in, in the chat uh, later on. But here you just have some images of what it you know, looks like in action. So basically you can have your whole product pack catalog on your mobile phone with augmented reality, add that into your physical environment. In virtual reality, you can jump in and also create training experiences, which we're gonna hear, hear about in, in just a couple of minutes. You can, like I mentioned, combine it uh, so you can actually meet from your PC into or your HoloLens uh, and collaborate with your colleague. So he's probably on site. You can also, from virtual reality, actually jump in and meet with your colleague who is wearing a HoloLens. This is quite a cool, it's a cool experience where you actually get this avatar in front of you once 
in your room with you. Um, it's it's quite um, impressive. Uh, if you go to the next slide, Corey. So some of the cases that we, we some of our customers that's using um, our platform today is Sonovo, uh, where they use the HoloLens very much on, you know, helping remote assist, but also setting up like these virtual step-by-step -step guides in their environment. You could save that into an environment. We can also have like sales rooms and marketing rooms in our platform that's in full virtual reality. And then we also have Gronfoss, which we're just going to hear about uh, now. So over to All you, right. Christian. And Ty. Thank you again, Mas. Um, all right, so let's uh, look at one of the cases and some of the things that we do in the area of education and, uh, and training. Um, first of all, a disclaimer, uh, this is a long journey. Uh, we're on that journey. So of course, we're not doing all training in Grundfos in this environment or in this universe. There's no question about it. But we are exploring different ways on how to solve some of the issues that we see around, for instance, scaling training across the globe in some of the things that we're doing. And that's where we're using XR, or in this case, VR. Um, if you jump to the next slide, Corin. Yes. Uh, the case that we're going to go through is, um, I, well, first I named uh, the, the case Water Networks for Dummies. Um, the, the people who joined the, the session were not dummies, so, so that didn't really <laughs> work. But it was an introduction to Water ne Networks, and uh, it was a case that we ran in uh, November because we want to run a pilot with uh, real people, real things, real issues, etc., to see uh, the different ways that, uh, that this technology could be used. Uh, next slide. Um, but training as such is not the only thing that we do uh, around this because XR is the interesting thing with XR is that wherever I look or anyone else, I think across, you know, the whole supply chain in the company or, you know, cradle to grade or whatever it is, XR at one point will affect anything that we do in there. It might be that we need to, uh, you know, wait for the maturity, et cetera, to, to come there, either from the devices or the services, et cetera. But there's no question, there's no doubt about that the, the XR technology and the ways of working, new ways of working, et cetera, will affect anything from awareness, marketing, sales, pre-sales, pre-commissioning, commissioning, maintenance, service, training, and even decommissioning on the other side. No, no doubt about it. When we look at this from Grundfos and in the XR team or in the community that we are around XR, we kind of have three main use cases that we're looking into and we can place most of the things in there, but it doesn't say that it's necessarily only in the, those areas. And those are remote presence, uh, digital twins, of course, working from anywhere, which uh, COVID-19 and uh, cor uh, Corona, et cetera, really, really propelled into to uh, in action. And the same thing goes with training and education and guidance, et cetera. Over on the right side, you see a couple of examples. You have the top left corner there, where which is uh, VR training, something that Mas mentioned before as uh, one of the projects we worked together with Synergy on before, which is shop floor training, uh, where um, blue color workers can put a headset on and they can step into this virtual reality world of their workstation or their process, or maybe quality assurance or safety guidance, et cetera. And they can train the different things uh, in there. That's something that we actually have operationalized and that we're doing around the world in different factories. But we're also done digital twins. And down to the right corner, that you, uh, which is also something Mats mentioned, is that the new kind of thing that will go in and support us on many of these things is really this reality capture, where I, from this one here, two minutes, have scanned a pump pit and get really, really high quality 3D assets that then can be shared into, for instance, VR or into, uh, into other type of uh, use cases. Next page, please. Um, when we... Yep. Sorry, Christian, real quick, there's a question. If you, oh. if you have time to answer a quick question, Jakob yeah, is asking please. Both, both of you guys, but Christian Tyler, is there a certain area, and I think he's talking about these three areas right here, with more speed than others within extended reality. So is one of these progressing further, further than the others? Yeah, I would say it really depends on, well, it depends on the use cases and how well defined they are, but it also depends on kind of like the, the energy from those who have seen the light that can drive it forward because it is still in many cases unmature markets and technology and not unmature but it's it's you know it's still something that needs to be adopted into an organization so so there's also a lot of you know 
having people believe in it and then run with it. And I would say that from last year, we have seen a lot of traction and good energy, specifically on the thoughts around classroom training, uh, et cetera. Because there's, uh, you, you have this notion of, uh, so I, I kind of jump ahead in my presentation here. You have this, you have this perspective that we need to do, for instance, a lot of customer centricity. We need to have customer centricity in the company. And that's great, you know, but we can't bring 19,000 people out to a customer. But with this, we can at least bring 19,000 or make it possible for 19,000 to come out to a customer location and actually have a conversation in a multi-universe around this. So, so I think there's a lot of different things that plays in on this. Uh, and that's why, why Classroom right now is one of the big ones. Great, okay. all right. Remove the Q and A from my screen. So yeah, okay. So we, yeah. So XR. I said you know we're still early in the game here and everything like that. But we kind of followed some dogma rules, and and why I take them up is just because there are some things that we can structure very much, and then there are other things that we have this emerging technology and ways of working that this is you just need to try. Right, so, so speed before excellence is one of the things that we worked a lot about. And it's not because we're not saying that we want, don't want to do excellence, but we just need to have the speed. The other one, explore and experience. If you have tried VR five years ago on a little cardboard box, et cetera, you don't know what VR is anymore because you need to try what's possible right now. That's the experience that you need to see. And the other one is, of course, this whole reuse, reuse, reuse. We don't want to build something that just covers one little use case over here. We want to do things that can work across the board. And that's just some of the dogma rules we've followed. Next one, please. Um, so when it comes to training, where do we come from? I mentioned shop floor um, on the left side here. This is one of these mobile VR stations that we're now setting up on uh, you know, shop floors around the, uh, around the world where uh, blue color workers can go in and train. On the right side, I mentioned COVID and Corona and, uh, and, and what, what that did. Um, when Corona hit uh, in Denmark, um, after I think it was three or four weeks, we had built the first concept together with Synergy XR and their platform to actually do VIP customer meetings in VR. So we sent out headsets to customers uh, and then we you know, invited them in their municipality customers looking at different pit solutions for wastewater and blah, 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 all those different things. And um, fantastic response from that. And it's kind of that we're pigging, piggybacking from. Uh, and the picture here with Niklas sitting there with his headset on is, is more of a fun note that he's a sales specialist doing a customer meeting with Swedish municipality customers in VR on his boat on the west coast of Sweden. I mean, it says a lot about him, says a lot about the technology, also says a lot about the, the internet connection in, uh, in, in Sweden, of course. <laughs> but he can do that. Next page, please. Um, so why why is this interesting? This kind of and we we've named it classroom, but I mean there's a lot of you know it's it's a training guidance education etc. But let's let's stick with the classroom kind of feel around this. And um, first of all, there's been a lot of training freeze, uh, not only you know due to Corona, but due to other uh, reasons as well because it's hard to get the experts to fly in and do physical training or whatever it might be. And we're also moving more and more towards applications and networks. So it's not just a product you need to train on. You need to understand the system. You need to understand, you know, how things are, you know, hanging together in an application, et cetera. The other one is, of course, redu reduced and restricted travel due to Corona, but also because of CO2 and cost reductions or what, what might be. And that whole increased remote presence is just needed because you still need to be out there and understand or service or do things. And then of course, the evolution of training, you know, PowerPoints and Teams, in this case, Zoom, et cetera. I do actually look a bit younger on Zoom than I usually do on Teams. Maybe we should do a little switch, I don't know. It's the filter, I added, 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 added a filter. Right. So evolution of training and PowerPoints, if you go to the next page, I'm not <laughs> saying this is wrong, what you see here now, but it's a classical training package in a PowerPoint, you know? 54 pages or whatever, the 60 or something like that. And again, it's not wrong, but it's just, ah, oh, it's massive. And you need to sit through it and you need to, and who can remember what said on what was said on page 13? I'm not saying that you will remember, remember what I said on minute 13, but there is just something else that can go into how you captivate people and how you train their brain and all those different things. Next page, please. 
Um, so um, how we approach this for the, the tests that we did last year and the, the more operational side that we're working on now in, uh, in 2022 was to say, okay, so let's take a topic and then try to do a training out from that. And what we need for that, of course, is first of all, a, a real expert teacher who is ready to jump into this because it is new. It's not just running a Teams. You need to suddenly navigate in a, in a different world with yeah, all the stuff that goes around in that. You know? um, and then iterate, iterate, iterate. It is not gonna be perfect first time, not the second time, not the third time, not the fourth time, you, but you'll get there and you'll get better and better and better. That one, of course, is this flexible, a flexible platform. We cannot try to build this. It needs to be, it needs to be like a PowerPoint where you put it together because you know how to put it together and you can do it again and you can copy it and then you can change that and use it somewhere else. You know, it needs to be that easy. And then of course you need to have the content because now suddenly we're talking 3D, right? So it needs, it, we don't do this because we can put a, a PDF on the wall and run that in VR or a PowerPoint. That doesn't make sense. It needs to be because you need to have an application. So, so we need to have access to that. If you jump to the next page, please. Sure. Keeping the time here. So the process how to get there, uh, and I know I'm just dipping the, the toe. No, that's not a toe. The finger into the water here uh, was really to say, okay, um, we started out very, you know, just sketchy. In this case, actually, in the PowerPoint, saying, so what is it? What is it that we want? What is the experience? No, we need to have some some things in here, some tanks, some water towers, some welcoming area and we need to have a good model that explains and then you have over on the right side you know this thing that we sat put together so, so you have this big we call it a tabletop model and that's of course not something i have made myself i'll come back to that but but it's necessary to have this good overview kind of models like this to talk out from but in the background you see the experience in the classroom and all that stuff in there is something that I made myself and I'm not a developer and I'm not a designer or anything like that. I was the one to put the different things up and place them in the right place and think through and that would need to go on. And that's how it needs to be. Next page, please. And if we then look at and kind of, so, so going back to this whole thing about 3D and the importance of different 3Ds too. And this is kind of reflecting back to how are we now going to scale this? Because one thing is to kind of do a one-time thing, but if you want to run this on, I don't know, Ty, what, what do we have? Nine, 10 different application areas just in the industry. Yep. And then we have thousand products and <laughs> different ways to put it together. We need to make sure that when someone builds these things very quickly, they need to have an asset gallery. And that's kind of what you see here. And we kind of defined it into, or uh, broke it down into products, of course, system and applications, whatever that might be, a pit, or in this case, case actually, a cooling, uh, industry cooling uh, system on the top there. Environments, which could be, uh, I don't know, a water works or, or something larger. And then props to make it kind of fit into, so, so that people's mind get into the, you know, the, the topic that they're in. And you can't do that in a physical classroom. But you can do it in VR because we have the possibility. Next page, please. Um, and I also mentioned that you know the next kind of big thing here, the reality capture, and you mentioned it as well, Mats, uh, is giving us also a possibility of then rapidly creating and recreating the world around us and put that in there so that user can join. And that could be anything from 360 to photogrammetry as you have in the middle or reality capture with a, a phone like this where you would actually just in minutes capture uh, the world around you and, and then use that. Next page, please. Christian, can you use just two seconds on describing what the differences are between these three? Yeah, so the first one, 360, that's made from, a, well, you could do it on this one as well, but a camera with uh, probably two uh, fisheye uh, cameras that will then make one spherical picture of the surrounding. So when you stand in the middle, you will see the world as it is as a picture. You can't move it in it, but you will see everything in very high detail. And you can do that as a video as well. Photogrammetry is where you would use uh, pictures, typically 100, 200, 500, whatever it is. And, and you will take an object and you will take a lot of pictures of that and then run that through a process that then recreates that object into a model. Uh, and that can actually be done on one of these already today, like uh, some of the pictures that you see there. And then the last one, reality capture, is where it's using the LiDAR in the, in the iPhone Pro 
which means that you don't necessarily need to just do a little object. You can walk around and it will capture the world around you. Funny story, bought a new house last, uh, last year. And every house that we went in to look at, I had this one sitting up here with the LiDAR on. And then of course, when I got home with my wife, we had a 3D asset of the whole house that we've been looking at and we could go in and measure it, et cetera, uh, very quickly. So that's the that's the the three. I have deleted those assets, by the way. Private. Sneaky James Bond style. I like that. <laughs> okay. Next page. All right. Yeah, and then uh, and here's the result. So this is a video. Ty, uh, uh, not Ty. Sorry, uh, Corey. Yeah. Um, you want to narrate over it? Yeah. So I think uh, if you can yeah. just play it, then I will just speak yeah. out from it. All right, so, so how we did this was that we kind of had one first uh, classroom like this, which was the general you know, area where people would gather and you would talk through the, the process of a water networks and you could have questions and discussions around it and go into details, et cetera. Then from there, we actually took all the audience into Bell Waterworks, which is, was kind of like a classroom too, so we went for a site visit. And in this case, we used kind of photogrammetry models of different things. And the, the expert and the teacher would then take everyone in this, uh, in this class on a guided tour through all of Bale Waterworks in a 3D, in this case, uh, also 360s. And that was really interesting because, first of all, I've been to Bale Waterworks. And I know you can see this is a 3D, but actually it's really close to the real thing. You know, so so you, you do get the feeling of actually being out there. And many of the participants were actually saying that as well, that they, they were really impressed that, wow, I've just been to Beta Waterworks. And I'm sitting in, I don't know, Germany or wherever they might uh, have been located. And then we kind of rounded off everything as, if, you know, group, uh, getting people together in a group again, doing some discussions out from that. And of course, then finishing up with a selfie picture uh, of the whole group uh, and that's a wrap right and that took approximately one uh, one hour to uh, to to take people around um and while uh, and uh, uh, Corey, while you're now trying to get the the powerpoint back to where it was <laughs> i kind of will I like I to to tie, a tie into uh, the conversation here yeah and um, before we then wrap up the uh, the parts of this but but ty i, I know you're not water networks but you're in in no. And um, what, what are some of the bigger challenges looking at competences, et cetera, that you have? And where do you see this kind of help out in that, uh, in that road? You know? Right, right. So that's, that's a really good question. So the, the main thing that we talk about is competence retention, right? So retaining all of the different content that we have. And, and in years past, it would either be, all right, hey, you're going to do a, a presentation over Teams or you've got to come together in person, right? So there, and then we also have a, a, a training platform online where people can go and take online trainings. But it, whenever I started out as an application engineer, somebody would tell me a part about a pump. Well, they would show me the, they would tell me about the part and then they would show me on a drawing. And then I would have to go out to the shop and actually look at that part in the pump to realize what it was and get it to click in my mind. So the more that we can make things tangible in a virtual setting, the better, that the more competence retention you get. And on top of that, we're going away from just being a pump supplier, right? Now we're going to be assets to the application, to the entire system. So to do that, you have to see like on the tabletop here where you have this entire water network. The, the, all of our engineers in, in sales associates, they have to be able to see the entire system and how one part affects another part. And there's no better way to do that than in person or in a virtual setting. It's, it's very, very difficult to do over a computer. So that, that's what the, the whole goal on this thing is to create that learning journey. And, and this, the virtual reality part is, is a part of that learning journey, right? So we start with online classes and then we go to virtual reality and then we finish that up with in-person training. And, and the more that we dive into this, the more that we see virtual reality is playing a bigger role and is going to expand into to more and more things 
because of its versatility. There's so much you can do with this that you can't do over teams or in some parts in person, it's just logistically impossible. Mm -hmm. and, and that doesn't even begin to talk about the cost savings that's associated with this. So it, the, the one downside to it is we're in its infancy, right? Or, or in, maybe not a downside, but an opportunity. So the more we get other people to buy in and, and we can start to scale this, the better off we're going to be going forward. Is that a, does that help explain it? Very good. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> one, uh, what area are you uh, kind of, because we're, we're going to run some, uh, some real trainings in VR here next uh, month. What, what is it? Uh, what's yeah. the scope around that? What are you looking at? Yeah, so our first one is industrial cooling. So we start with a, a learning journey on oh, oh, my inter, internet connection is unstable. So in case I break up, my apologies. But so we start with a learning journey online and then we go into the VR setting. And in that VR setting, a, a person will be able to learn everything that you need to know about industrial cooling. So the entire system, uh, all the products that go into it and then the common issues that you see around that. So a, a lot of people, they get systems, but it's the problem solving around issues that arise within that system. And then that, that's where we're focusing a whole lot of our time. And, and our, our first one's industrial cooling, and then we're going into uh, water treatment specifically within the semiconductor industry. So whatever application or whatever one thing you want to train on, you can definitely pinpoint and, and then provide all of the assets. And like uh, Christian was talking earlier, the real life scans. So you can have models that are, that are pretty to where you can conceptualize what the application looks like. And then you can go into the real life scans to see what it looks like in real life. So people aren't seeing just animations, they're seeing the hardware, the wires, uh, the dirt, everything that you, you can't see just by looking at something in a presentation. Right. Excellent. Thank you. Ty, I'll, uh, we'll let you in again uh, here when uh, we'll go to questions. Um, Corey, sure, yeah, sure. so so in front of you here, the, these are just screenshots, of course, from, from the same thing that we saw in the video. So I think we can jump to uh, to the next one here. Same as that. Yeah, uh, same as that one, exactly. Um, now, so the results, <laughs> and this one is funny. So we asked afterwards, um, you know, what, what were your skill level on water networks? And then we asked, well, we asked that before, and then we asked that after. And hey, you know, 2.1 up to 4. But of course, it's not scientific. If I've shown them a PowerPoint, they would also have gone from 2.1 to 4, I guess. But hey, at least we have not dumbed them down, you know, because they could have gone from 2.1 to 1. So, so at least that, that's always. Now, I think the interesting one is, and if you jump to the next page, Corey, that is, of course, the comments coming out from this um, and, and the, you know, what, how people felt the experience to be. And we kind of categorize this into, you know, the context, the perspective, the you know, interactions and UX facilitation as well, because as I said before, you need to learn some new skills um, and comparison to classroom uh, comfort. And uh, I can see the last one because I have a video opportunities Opportunity. and moving forward from there. So if you, uh, Corey, take the next one here. Sure. Um, I mean, I very much like the water waterworks tour. It added a sense of realness that is missing from other remote trainings. I think that again kind of says, you know, what one of the big possibilities here. You can actually take people to a place that they had not had a possibility before. And, and there is, of course, a lot of another perspective, a lot of other perspectives into this, you know, being there and, and and all that. If you then take the interactions and UX, we, you know, I, like being able to bring in additional to anything so suddenly you're standing there and you say yeah but i don't understand this and then suddenly someone has the possibility to i don't know pull in a 3d model to explain something so that that of course gives us a possibility but there are also some other things that that came out from it for instance this whole thing about you can't see a person smile even if you can fake that they're smiling you know it's not smile until you see it as a as a video but th those are things that you know, over the next few years, you'll see that that's just changing because the new hardware coming out is going to do face tracking. So you will actually see the real face 
the real smile or whatever it is. So, so that we just put to the side. All those different things we'll put to the side because we know it will get there somewhere. Facilitation or the next one, uh, Corey. And um, yeah, this one goes more to, again, to, to the trainer, you know, and uh, preparing the things before, during, and, and uh, after. And also into, you know, now we have this possibility to meet in virtual, we should have more activities you know, mini games or whatever it is to, to light things up. Next one, please. Um, almost as good as going in real life and much better in the classroom or webinar training. I mean, that's good feedback. Maybe, maybe we did, you know, uh, get a person who just loved this. So, but, but, but I think that we, we have seen the same comments from the customers that we've been doing the VIP meetings with. So it is, there, there is something in there. Of course, you know, you will still have some issues. And, you know, I think if you go to comfort, there, there, there's some, uh, some of the comments coming there, you know, dizzy or dizziness, et cetera. Again, that will get better over time because we develop things in a different way. The hardware, you know, gets better, et cetera. In the meantime, we will then tackle that by having some users join by PC, for instance, instead of in VR, so, so that we include everyone. But there is definitely some areas around the comfort, like the longer sessions, et cetera. That you, you need to think about that. What and was then, the experience uh, level beforehand, Christian? Uh, sorry? What was the experience level beforehand for the participants? Uh, there was, yeah, no, it, they, they were very novice. Uh, I would say uh, in these two first groups that we ran, there were okay. there were two or three that were gamers who had been in in, in VR before, but most of them were very very novice. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, and then opportunities. You know, I I think we I see a lot of opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> so coming back to the question about you know where do we see the drive here? Yeah, there's a lot in here. Onboarding or you know other type of uh, advanced training, etc. So we we will definitely see more of that. Next page, please. So some of the challenges, I've kind of man mentioned some of them already. I, I would say the 3D content is still, it's not, it's, it's not as big of a challenge anymore, but it's more of getting the process in place so that we can create this content on a bigger scale. And, and we're getting there because that's something we can do something about. Um, but, but that's where, where a lot of the work is being done uh, right now. And if you take the Bill of Waterworks, the big, big, big model that we had there, I know that one took time to create, but you can again say, eh, but you know, if you want to have 19,000 to visit it compared to you know, spending some time on that model one time and then reusing it, then the cost for that is nothing compared to, uh, the, to the value you can get out from it. Otherwise, I would say culture maturity, adoption, you know, getting people over the chasm. We have captured some real good people here, but we have another 80% or 90% of the population internally in Grundfos that we need to onboard into this. That's, of course, going to be a longer journey. Um, but that's how it is with any new tech uh, and any new ways of working. So, so it's not new in that sense. And we'll get there. We'll definitely get there. And this is the cool new tech. This is not... No. Uh, oh, a new computer with a new color. No, this is VR. So, uh, so this is the cool stuff. All right, next page, please. Yeah, and that's kind of like, thank you again from, uh, <laughs> from the team at Bill Waterworks. And as I said in the start, we're in the early, early, not, not early, early phases because we've been doing this for some years. But, but I, you know, here in 2022, that's where we were really going to start looking at the whole scaling part of it. I have a colleague, Søren uh, Steinitzen, if anyone is interested in speaking to someone in Grundfos who is really skilled in, in a VR training, et cetera, and, and who is looking at this whole project around how we can scale this into the industries and, and the divisions, et cetera, then he's the man uh, or the guy to, uh, to go to. And there's, there's other people in the team working on it as well. But I think that's uh, it for me right now. I don't know, Ty, if you have anything else to add to, to this or if we are going over to uh, Q&A, Corey. I see there's been some questions here. There have been some questions. And I think one of them that we'll start with this one, I, I think this was a fairly uh, straightforward question is uh, we have an anonymous attendee who's asking, how has the experience with number of, of participants been? And I know that you guys are just getting started. It's still early days. Uh, the question goes on to say, I guess classroom training versus designer development meetings uh, kind of, you know, requires different demands. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Maybe also you too, Mass. 
do you want to start mass or um should i there was a poll out here for, for me can you can you repeat so, so the question is basically when we're talking about the number of participants based upon the particular use case for example you know classroom training or it's, it's still maybe you know less interactive or it's maybe one one instructor teaching a large group of people versus more design developer meetings where it's a little bit more interactive do we have any uh, do you guys have any thoughts on that well we would recommend up to 20 uh, also because there's a um, do actually to the hardware limitations um, you can do more um, if you shut down something like spatial audio and stuff like that in there but um, if it should be an interactive session where people is participating and maybe also drawing and then coming with questions and stuff like that uh, then we would not recommend more than like 15 or 20 maximum 25 people um also because it's simply the hardware uh, once you have like these even though it's a uh, uh, it can actually do a lot as you can see it it's it's drawing um, it can you could be in a, a full system like the the build of waterworks uh, that we see behind in this picture and um, you can have a lot of content in there but still uh, it is it has some limit limitations if you compare it to a large P, uh, pc that's running a graphic as a separate graphic cards uh, and gpu that that you know uh, where you do maybe cat drawings on and stuff like that so so there, there is still limitations in the hardware on how much you can push through uh, these headsets so uh, and of course, the more people you are, you actually add in there, the more it demands from your bandwidth. It the more it demands uh, on your 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 headset, basically. So that's where we are right now with the interaction sessions. Of course, it's possible to do where where there's not so much interaction, where where you actually for do presentations, then you can go up uh, a lot uh, a lot sc uh, larger scale. Uh, Great. Yeah. Yeah. Can Can I add on to that for Please do. A second? Please do. Yeah. A, a, a lot of it depends on the type of curriculum that you put together. So if it's really highly intensive with a lot of feedback and interaction, like you're going and changing valves, or you're looking at instrument displays, then you you want to have a lower number. But if you're simply presenting, like Mads was saying, then that number can increase. So it really depends on the outcome that you want for that specific training session. And, and then also how long it is, too. Like we, we it, it just all flows together nicely with the lower number of people that you have based on the, the amount of interactions that you have designing your your training you need to think about an outcome mm -hmm. so what, what i've done whenever i started looking at, at the training session is start with the uh, with the end in mind and then work your way back from there and then you'll start thinking about how many people that you'll get involved and in, in how many people will be quiet and, and that sort of thing so that, that that's the way that i've done it in the past Ty, have you guys found a sweet spot in terms of length in terms of time yeah yeah so one one to two hours and then you have to take a break right. for 20 30 minutes and then from there you can come back so the the most will go is like half a day and there will be several breaks every like every hour there will be a sitter and keep in mind is is people that aren't used to be using VR on a consistent basis, that they, they get they get tired of having that on their face. Sure. So you've got to schedule sure. those breaks in. Yeah. Yeah, they're 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 still kind of heavy and it's it's your your head kind of has to get used to having something like that. But I think as right. wearables, I think as wearables increase and they become lighter, then uh, we won't have to oh, deal with yeah. that issue. Pretty soon the the glasses that we're seeing Christian wearing uh, will will be our, our VR glasses and and the not so so distant future. There's another question real quick from Dennis. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's a really good question. And it's really about, you know, restrictions uh, are lifting travels, opening up a little bit and training and in-person meetings are becoming the normal again. So moving forward, and this is to all of you, um, you know, I, I, let me just ask, ask, ask it like this. Where will we see distinctions between the need for in-person meetings versus, for example, VR meetings? Is there a clear line? 
I um, I don't I don't think there's a clear line right now because we are so used to in-person meeting and we're trying to understand how virtual meetings will you know work. So that's what we really are. You know, that's 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 what we're exploring. Uh, as I said, iterate, 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 and we're trying to figure that out. In in terms of yeah. The, the question about restrictions, lift travel, etc. I think that there's been changes already to society in the way that we work because of the, the last two years that we've had. There's no questions that there will be, you know, physical trainings and meetings and, and everything like that, for sure. But there's some of it will start moving over to a different way. Um, and whether that will then be 10% or 30% or whatever it is, we, we don't really know yet. I don't think that you know, before Corona, even some of the product training was actually kind of put on ice. And, and that wasn't because of not, not enough, you know, funding to fly people around, etc. It was literally because it's hard to get those skilled experts together and put the time aside with the travel and everything to then sit there and do, I don't know, five days of training uh, or whatever that might be. That has not changed that you, you still have hard time getting the experts to spend the time. But if you can do parts of this, then in VR instead, where you don't need to do the travel, et cetera, then maybe that will then free up their time and they will still spend the, the time. That, that is, yeah, that's my point on it. Yeah, it, that's that's a really good uh, point, Christian. Like, what is the new normal? I think that, that we're redefining that as we go along, right? So one of the things that, that you look at is, is in the past, we would bring in 30 engineers for a training, a week-long training that costs so much money. And, and then they would, they would leave that training and then never use it again. So now we're getting into the, and they would lose that competency a month after they got the training. So now it's more, hey, how do we develop an incremental learning to where they retain that knowledge over time? Mm -hmm. And in... To, to do it in person is it, it, just simply too expensive. So you right. have to find a way to get people together and to do it in a, in a very constructive manner. And, and I don't see a better platform than, than what we're talking about with VR. I mean, you can, you can get people together inexpensively and then, and then scale it to a, a broad number of people to get done. And then on top of that, the, the subject matter experts they don't they don't have to do the traveling either or they don't have to bring people in so they're more they have more time to work with individualized groups based on their needs do you guys also see this maybe as a space for upskilling employees for, for to your point ty maybe someone who's who's forgotten a skill maybe it's been a long time since they've worked on a particular machine to go back have a repository of different training scenarios that uh, that employees can use Oh, absolutely. That's one of the main things that we're doing with this. So the brand new people that are coming into the, into the company that have very little experience, we, we can develop complete learning journeys for them to get them to get that confidence faster than, than just your typical experience from on the job uh, experiences, right? So, the faster you can do that, and the, that's that's what we're tasked with doing. Great. So, guys, we have a few minutes left. Do you have any uh, any closing remarks? Anything you want to leave uh, leave our guests with today? Yeah. Um, well, closing remark. Well, as I said, explore experience. That's uh, that's the only way to really understand. I mean, we could present this for hours. Uh, I've said it before. I could present things for days in PowerPoint, but you don't understand it until you try it yourself. Put it on your head, play a Beat Saber or whatever, you know, do your first scan or photogrammetry on that. That's where the, the light bulb moment happens. And that's what you need to do. So that's one. Second one is that, you know, we're, we're happy to share our experience. We're happy to talk things through with you, et cetera. So if anyone wants to reach out after this and, and you know, get some more details or try it out or whatever, just, uh, just, just ping me. Or uh, or one of us on um, on the email or I don't know LinkedIn something, um, and then uh, then we'll set something up. Great, yeah, I will be sharing everyone's contact details with uh, with all attendees as well as a recording um, of this event and, and a few other things that we can pass along. Ty, do you have any uh, closing remarks for everybody? Uh, yeah, just uh, thanks for uh, allowing the time to uh, present 
talk about what we've done and where we're going with it. I, I think that this medium is is the future and and it's going to take a lot of work to get it done right like uh, christian was saying you've got to you've got to continually uh try you've got to fail you've got to you've got to edit you've got to redo it and redo it but o- over time i don't think there's going to be a better platform for for confidence development just because of how how broad it is and and how all-encompassing it is for for anything that you need to train on. Great, thank you, Ty. So for anyone out there, yeah, there's a few things on the horizon, Christian, complex training, IoT data, 3D scan. I think you kind of covered these, maybe not IoT. Uh, We'll we'll save that for the next webinar. (laughs) That's a webinar in and of itself, big topic. I did want to share with with, with everyone that we are uh, actually next week launching a new VR training demo with Synergy XR. It's a roughly 15 minute experience. You're getting a little preview of it here. You can join from virtual reality if you do have the glasses or you can join from your PC. It presents the latest in VR training technology and is built on the same or is the same platform that Gwen Foss is using for their XR training activities. And if anything, it inspires you how you can get started by showing a really good example of how VR training is used. You can book your t- yours today. Just go to SynergyXR.com and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. But on behalf of everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, like I said, we'll be doing, uh, doing a follow-up mail. We'll be sending a recording of this, put out everybody's contact details as well as to send a few uh, more specific examples of, of things that you can use to, to learn more about your own VR training uh, journey. So thanks, guys. Thanks, uh, thanks for joining us and uh, have a great day.